Oh, hello world. What is up? Welcome to Build. I'm your host, Matt Forte. We are here live at the Build studio in New York City. Uh, premiering February 21st, Hunters is a new Amazon original series set in the 70s, uh, 1970s New York to be precise. Uh, the show follows a renegade group of Nazi hunters as they set out to identify and eliminate hundreds of high-ranking Nazi officials living amongst us. Uh, to quote executive producer Jordan Peele, it is ambitious, relentless, thoughtful, and at times jaw-droppingly twisted. Dude, this is a wild show. Uh, and I'm so excited to talk about it. Joining me now, one of the stars of said show. Please make a crazy amount of noise and welcome the great Greg Austin right here. Do it up. Hi, guys. Hi, guys. How are we doing? Hey, man. Congratulations on this fantastic, crazy show that you are a very big part of. Thanks, it must yeah. be a wild ride, man. Yeah, it's pretty pretty nuts. This is um, an intense show to be a part of. Very intense. Yeah. <laughs> excited to talk to you about it. We'll, we'll get into all that stuff, man. How are you doing? How's yeah. life going right now? I'm grand, yeah. It's nice to be here. I love New York, so it's nice to be back. I filmed here for seven months last year, and I miss it. I really do miss it. It's a cool city. Welcome back, man. It's nice to have you. Thanks for having um, me. So before, before we dive into the making of all that, I just saw uh, you just started the press officially like a couple of days. I think like last week you did a whole screening in London. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, Al Pacino came over, and he was there for the BAFTAs. So we were like, okay, we can put this all together. We yeah. can make something work. He's over there. We'll do something. Uh, yeah. yeah, we did a screening, and we started the press properly last week, which has been fun. How did the screening go, man? This is, I think, with a lot of shows right now, uh, they're shot so beautifully and so cinematically, so to see it large with a big audience like that must have been a cool experience. Yeah, absolutely. Seeing my face up on this huge screen was kind of intimidating. Um, I had never seen the pores of my face so so exquisitely, so that was quite an experience. And Pacino's in the room while this is all happening, too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's there. He's sat there watching himself, um, and yeah, it was... I, I get to see Al Pacino every so often. Like, he's one of the good guys. I'm one of the bad guys. So I didn't get to see him that much during the shoot. Right. But, um, yeah, it was cool hanging with him. He's he's a lovely dude. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things, too. I assume, like, with your part, uh, it's one of those roles where you don't necessarily get to see a whole lot of what everyone else is doing while you're yeah. filming. So it's kind of a, a great experience to watch. Was that your first time seeing it back in the theater, or had you seen stuff before? I'd seen the first few episodes. Okay. Um, you knew what was coming. Yeah, I knew what was coming. Uh but yeah, I don't get to spend that much time with the hunters, uh, these guys. Um, and th so there's sort of like three arcs in the story. There's the Nazis. I'm playing a Nazi, if you didn't know. <laughs> neo-Nazi. Um, which I don't know if it's... Uh, I think it's an insult being cast as a neo-Nazi. I don't know. That guy's perfect. Yeah, you don't want to hear that. <laughs> but Not really. You do want the job. I really want the job, the but yeah. What you want to hear. Is uh, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know how to take that, but... Um, yeah, so there's the Nazis, there's uh, the FBI, uh, like, searching for what's going on, and there's the hunters who are looking for us and trying to take us out. Yeah. That's right. Everybody's kind of on their own hunt, in a way. It's a very yeah, apt absolutely. title. There's a lot of hunting that takes place within this show. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, take me back to the beginning. How did, how, did you, how did you come to find that you were perfectly cast for this? <laughs> how, did you, how did you get involved with this show? How did it all start? What was the audition um, like in that? So my audition process was sort of weird. Um, I did a tape for it back in, because I'm obviously very English, um, <laughs> very English. I was uh, going to guess Jersey. But that's, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so I got the sides through um, back in 2018, end of 2018. I was at a place called Alton Towers, which is this theme park up north of England. Um, and I was like, oh, my God, this is a really cool script. This is exactly the part I want to be playing. I'm always playing Boy Next Door right. sort of posh English boys, princely sort of role. So I really wanted something that was the opposite of that. And you can't get, yeah, you can't get much further than playing a neo-Nazi, a psychopath, hitman neo-Nazi. Um, so yeah, I saw it and I was like, this is amazing. I'm, I'm going for it. And I did one tape for it. Didn't hear anything for like a couple months. I was like, that's gone. That's fine. That's how these things normally go. And I called call from my manager just before Christmas saying that I'm shortlisted for the role, which I'm like, okay, great. That's cool. I'm going to have a call with the director or something. I might have to go to LA, whatever the way these things go. And just before Christmas, my manager calls me and says, I just got the job. So off of one tape, um, which is sort of unheard of. Um, yeah, really. But also intimidating because I was like, they haven't seen much of me. Like, what? Yeah, exactly, right? Am I that convincing as a neo-Nazi? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently so. 
Well, also too, right? Is it one of those things where that's great? You got the gig, and yeah, all right, you got to play a Nazi. So that's that's a bummer. But <laughs> but it's also uh, it's kind of a lot of pressure, right? You did this one thing, and now they've got they're really invested oh, in you. You got to yeah. show up. You got to deliver. Yeah, you uh, got to give them whatever they saw in that tape now. Yeah. So there's a. A uh, scene, a shot in the um, trailer that you saw of me with a bowling ball it was one of my audition scenes and it was my first day on set. Yeah, my first day on set and I'm beating these guys up and it's a very dramatic big scene. Um, and I'm playing an American, so I'm doing an American accent and just with this big film crew all working, doing their things, I rock up on set and I'm terrified. It was absolutely terrifying the first day. But... It all came together, I think, and yeah. it's quite a memorable scene. I'm looking forward to everyone seeing it. 100%. Yeah. I, I never would have guessed that you were terrified while you were doing that, which speaks to your ability to sort of use that energy. I bricking it. Bricking it. Yeah. Do, you use that, do you have that term here? Is that, I've, is I've that? heard it in reference to temperature, <laughs> like it's brick outside. Oh, no, heard, bricking it. What's bricking it? Uh, shitting yourself. Oh, shitting bricks. There shitting bricks. There you yeah. go. Yeah, I got th- yeah, we got that. <laughs> okay, good. I just made it a little more elegant. You no, got rid of that. Exactly. It just made it English. <laughs> Um, so tell me this, you, you get the role, you find out you're going in, what in terms of preparation, you wanted this gig, you, you do, what kind of research do you do, how, how do you get ready to, to become this terrible person? Well, yeah, um, I can say that this character is about as far from me <laughs> as you yeah, can get, exactly. g- right, you'd hope so, right? Um, so I did a lot of research into psychopaths, Ted Bundy was a, really? hesitate to say inspiration, but an inspiration, um, his like charisma and uh, just his complete self-confidence and lack of empathy was very inspiring to me at for us playing a psychopath um because that's the one of the key things with the psychopath they just cannot empathize with anyone else so it's completely everything is about themselves and the power that they feel and the power they want to exert. So I was looking a lot into that. Um, Jodie Comer from Killing Eve was a big inspiration as well because she's just fantastic and I drew a lot from her performance. Um, yeah, just I, I, as a cool thing I tried to adapt. I've started meditating a lot recently in the last couple of years and trying to, there's a type of meditation called um, deity meditation which in which you try and embody this specific feeling um and so i was doing a lot of that before going on set trying to like embody this power and rage that he sort of feels um and listening to a lot of music really helps as well heavy music like what were you listening to uh tremonti there's uh, like heavy metal groups um that i really like um that really got me amped up walking onto set. See that? Hey, you said that I really like, which I think is interesting. That you like it. You are not this person, but that music can still help you get there. Well, absolutely. Yeah. I, th- I think every role that you play as an actor is you to some degree. Um, even though I am obviously not this person, <laughs> I am nowhere near this person. But that it has to come from me. I, I, you can't. You can never not be yourself. Yeah. So, I'm just finding facets of my personality that I don't normally tap into and just really running with that and trying to be as creepy as I can. <laughs> you get to do that fun thing that uh, as a villain you don't get to see often, but it's that thing where they're talking about something seemingly innocuous and completely unrelated to the moment and it gets creepier and creepier as they go and they tie it all together and you realize how it's relevant. Yep. It's just one of those things that's like, and you pull it off and it is so unsettling. Yeah. It's so much fun well, to thank watch. You. Thank you. Well, yeah. Is it fun to be awful like that? Is it oh, fun to be able to pretend so and do those creepy things? much fun. It's, uh, again, I hesitate saying it, but it's like, it's such a joy to play that sort of character. It's it's so far from me and what I get to do normally. I'm a very empathetic person and I struggle not to... We had a lower third. It says not a Nazi. We've had it under you this whole time. Everybody knows you're playing a character. Yeah. But I understand. But yeah, I get that question a lot. It's like, how do you sleep at night? Like yeah. you're doing all these like terrible, terrible scenes. But it's like, I actually sleep very well. It's like... <laughs> It's very cathartic doing it. It's super cathartic. You go and you do these these things that you never would do otherwise, and yeah, it's just really good fun. It's really good fun. Well, one of the and it's even like it's almost I think it's like said in the show as well. But I've had this conversation a lot with people that have played bad guys before, where it's like they're they're not the bad guy in their head. Like that's the whole trick, right? Absolutely. Is that you don't think of yourself as a bad guy. You're the hero of your own Absolutely. fucked up story. Absolutely. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I don't. I think he knows that he's evil. I think that's the, the a lot of bad guys don't know that they're evil and they want right. 
they want what they think is best. I think the actual difference with him is he knows that he's evil, but he embraces that. He's like, so the reason he's like part of these neo-Nazis is that not necessarily that he's like always wanted to be a Nazi. He's American. And so he's just like caught up with these Austrian German Nazis that are in America. Um, it's just that it's a vehicle for his chaos yeah. that he, a bit like the Joker, like he just wants to watch the world burn a little bit. So I th actually, it's like one of the rare occasions where I think he actually does think he's a bad guy, mm -hmm. but he loves it. And that's, he absolutely wants to be the, the worst version of himself or the best, however you, you look at it. That, that is fascinating yeah. <laughs> when you go back and watch it through that lens. And it makes a lot of sense because this guy's messed up. Yeah, he's <laughs> pretty messed up. Give you, how much of that backstory do they give you and how much do you got to find on your own? Um, so part of the joy of this, yeah. uh, this role was that I knew very little about his backstory. And you sort of don't really learn that much. You get little hints. Mm -hmm. um, you see parts of his past as you get later on in the season. Um, and I wasn't given really much of anything. I was just told, do what you want with it, pretty much. He is just, he's a ghost. He like, he comes in, you don't know much about him. He does these terrible things and seems to have fun doing it. Um, and you sort of get to just piece little bits together. But yeah, as I say, very much an enigma and a ghost that sort of drifts in and out. I was um I was just going through your Instagram and stuff and I saw that you ran a, a Spartan race and you did so you're, you're very yeah. much into fitness right uh, yeah yeah, yeah. And so I was I was wondering like when when you're tasked with this role was there any physical preparation did you like crank up the training in a certain way oh I've got to oh, be this imposing character yes. or tone it down like yeah what did that look like yeah well I'd been looking another reason why I was so into this role was I've been looking for a, a role that could translate me from being something of a, like a boy to a man. That's also why I'm trying to grow Aren't this beard we all? as well, We're right? All looking for that. Right, I'm just looking for that. So <laughs> I'd been training at the gym, lifting weights for uh, a couple of years prior to the show. And it was like, this is a perfect role for it. I can get into as good a shape as I can. Um, and yeah, I, I, I love lifting anyway. So it was a really good excuse. And that Spartan race was upstate New York somewhere. Upstate. Yeah, 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 it was just really cool. It was my first time doing a Spartan race. Oh, really? Yeah, I really recommend them to anyone that's not done them. Hard, hard as hard as nuts, but yeah, really good. Yeah, yeah I was um, yeah, and going through the research and stuff, I was, it was cool. I saw that you uh, prior to acting that you were you, were, you started off in dance. I did. Uh, yeah. yeah, I trained in musical theater. You trained yeah, in musical theater, and then you transitioned into acting. Does um, does that inform the way you sort of approach finding a character? Like, is the physicality a big part of it for you? Like, figuring out how they carry themselves. Yeah, absolutely. Like yeah, I think the first thing I found with him was his walk, which was something of a, a little bit of a swagger, but not too. I don't want to like overemphasize that. It's like he's just quietly self-confident, quietly laughing at everyone behind his behind his eyes. Um, but yeah, dance has very much helped me as an actor. Um, that's what I wanted to be for a long time, was to be a tap dancer or a modern dancer or something. Um, Why'd you switch? Why'd you come on? Uh, you get treated a lot better in TV and film. <laughs> you get treated a lot better than you do as a dancer. Uh, <laughs> so that part of the reason, but um, also I think it's just got a lot longer shelf life. Like yeah. you can be an actor any age. Yeah. Like I could still be 18, like Al Pacino and still performing. Dancers, time. it's a limited time and yeah. you do screw up your body a bit. So I, I'd always had this dream of being James Bond. <laughs> it was as a kid, I was this like pipe dream. I'd love to be James Bond one day. Um, and so when I got the opportunity to work in TV, um, I, I snapped it up and was like, that was one step closer. Yeah, exactly. It's not impossible. So it it's yeah. not likely, but it's not impossible. <laughs> It, it, could, it just as much could as could not happen right mm, now. Mm, like it's mm. definitely out in the universe. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you ever miss dance, man? Do you? I've not done a dance class in years. Um, really? So, yes, I do sort of miss being on the stage as well. It's a very it's a unique feeling and one that I miss. So I might go back that way one day. I'd love to do, I'd love to play Marius or something in Les Mis. Um, revisit those, those routes. Uh, we're going to go over, in just a second, we're going to talk to the audience and get some questions from the room, but uh, I'm going to go down a nerd path with you for a second. Please you were do. part of a show 
a part of a universe. And oh, I'm quite here we fond go. Yeah. Of. yeah. <laughs> well, I was just for, for those that may not know it in the states over here, but there was a, a show called Class. There was this uh, within the Doctor Who universe came yeah. out a year or so, a couple of years ago, mm-hmm. and you were on, you were a star of that show, man. Yeah. And that's a huge universe to be a part of. And I'm just yeah. curious, you did some stuff. I, I remember Capaldi was there a couple of times. Showed up. What was it like? To, especially was Who a big deal for you growing up, growing up over there and whatnot? Or? Well, it's sort of it's a household thing. Yeah. Doctor Who is so ingrained in the English culture um, that it's been going for over 50 years now. And yeah, it's just like classic television. Yeah. Um, so getting the opportunity to be a part of the universe, even though the show didn't do as good as we would have liked it to have, um, working with Peter Capaldi, being in the same universe as the Doctor is a blessing. And like it's, it's opened up a lot of doors for me. I get to go to conventions now and do signings for, and meeting people within the universe, uh, the fan base. And yeah, it's, it's a really cool family to be a part of. And yeah, one I, I love. And they kept the character going. You guys did a couple of the, the radio plays things. That they yeah, did. there's a company called Big Finish. Big Finish um, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah, yeah, who I love. They're great. Um, that I've carried on class, even though we never got another season out of it. Uh, they carried it on with audiobooks, and it's been lovely revisiting those characters and getting to do some audio work with them. It's really lovely. Very, very cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, last thing, speaking of audio, I, I saw you had a podcast, but it's been a little quiet since June. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's because I was over here filming you this. You were filming. That's what I figured it was. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was with my, one of my best mates. Um, uh, we just, everyone's got a bloody podcast now, though. <laughs> everyone's got a podcast. We might pick it back up. We might. Um <laughs> Thinking about it, but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's the what is it, a waste of time? Is the greatest waste of time? Greatest waste of time. Which it really was. It really was <laughs> the biggest waste of time listening to it. But good fun. Good fun. You put it out there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I want to remind everybody. Uh, this wild show is incredible. Hunters. It's February twenty first. It premieres, and you can catch it on Amazon. Uh, and you absolutely should because it's it's insane. Uh, it's really good. All right. We got how many? We got at least two. I want to get to both of them. I left just enough time. The first one's coming from Anna. Anna, I believe you have a microphone, so go for it. What's up? Good. Wonderful. Okay, Hi, Anna. Come down, Anna. What's up? How you doing? Good. And my question is, what was your favorite scene in the series? Oh, what can I say without spoiling too much? Um, there's some stuff that goes... Okay, yeah, yeah. I, can, I know what I can say. Um, <laughs> there's a scene where um, I'm running through a forest uh, trying to kill some people with a shotgun. Um which you wait till you see it. It gets pretty crazy. I'm doing some weird choreography. I'm doing. I'm singing at the same time. It's it's all. It's a weird scene. You really get to see an insight into how crazy this character is. Um, but running through this forest, pumping off this shotgun, um, was terrifying because I've never handled a gun before. And uh, being English, we just don't even come into contact with them. Um, so carrying the shotgun, pumping it off, trying to kill people um, in upstate New York was an experience. I think that was probably my favorite favorite scene of the show. I wish I could tell you more about it, but it would be giving too much away. Yeah, don't. Don't spoil anything. That is yeah. awesome. Uh, no. We've got time. Let's do one more question. Thank you so much Thank for your you. question. You. we got one more. This next one's going to come from Peter. Peter, you have a microphone as well. Go for it. Yes. My question is to you, um, how long have you been acting on TV show? Sure. Thanks, Peter. Um, I've been acting in TV since 2013, so seven years now, pretty much. Um, my first job out of college was um, on a show called Mr. Selfridge. I don't know if, don't know if it made its way over here. I think it did. Um, uh, Jeremy Piven starred in it, and I played his son. Um, which I think it was, was just Selfridge over here. I think they dropped the mystery. Oh, really? I could be crazy, but yeah. Yeah, I, I do remember the show, though. Yeah, for sure. Um, based around this very famous uh, Selfridge's store, one of the first department stores in the history of the world. Um, and, yeah, it was a real... That set me up to be sat here today. Um, I, I'd got, just been training musical theatre, and getting that role was a huge thing for me, and... Yeah, I've, I'm very thankful to that show. It taught me a lot about the craft of the industry. Yeah, so seven years. Did, um, I don't know if you can answer this without spoiling it, but I imagine... I'll try. Yeah. 
every time, every project for, for, for everybody, it always seems like there's something you learn from doing it. Was, is there something that you've taken from this project that you're excited to sort of apply or that you'll carry with you into the next one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, confidence more than anything. Um, I'm quite an anxious person, uh, introverted for the most part. Um, so one of the slightly perverse things I've taken away from it is whenever I'm feeling that way, like I'm walking around, I feel a bit nervous about something. If I was nervous, I was a little bit nervous coming on stage for this. So I, I immediately just went, okay, let's just be Travis for a minute. That's the name of the character uh, of this neo-Nazi. Just sit into him as a, as a person because he is just confidence. He is that. And so he's taught me that, weirdly enough. I'm, I feel more confident and more self-assured, which is lovely. It's, uh, I think I've taken that more than anything else from the show. So just to know myself and to be a bit more confident in myself. It's an incredibly valuable thing to, to have. And be able yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I've learned a lot from him. Uh, <laughs> not all good, but... <laughs> but learning no less. Yeah, learning. Uh, well, I'll remind the world, February 21st, you can see exactly what it is we're talking about and tap dancing around. This show is crazy and you're not going to want to miss it. Hunters will be on Amazon. Uh, you can check it out there. Uh, keep an out. Maybe Gray's going to start his podcast up again. Who knows? Maybe he will. Maybe he will. Yeah, yeah, anything's possible. We might. Uh, anything else you want to say before we get out of here? Anything you just want to plug? Uh, no, just watch the show. Just let me know what you think. Give me feedback. I'm very excited for it, and I hope you guys are too. I think the world's going to really respond in a big way, man. Uh, thank you so much for being here. You guys were a great audience. Thank you for your questions and hanging out. Well done. Yes, you're correct. Let's make some noise. Thanks, Join me guys. in thanking the great Greg Austin, man. Awesome.